see is that very good all right thank you well my name is Jim Ferguson and I am uh, living in Port Huron my wife and I just moved here maybe about four months ago uh, my mom and dad live here in Sarnia and uh, so we moved close so that we can um, that we can be close to help them out my mom's got pretty significant dementia you know, so we wanted to be close by um, I looked online and found the Unitarian Church over here in Sarnia for Sarnia and Port Huron and I first met Mark and Alan I think uh, early on and um, you know I, I think we had a, we were talking and and I said to Mark and Alan I think that you know we're looking for um, like her Deb and I are members of the Baha'i faith and we were looking for sort of like-hearted souls that we could engage with and um, oops there we go thank you there we go Oops. whoa great way up there yeah I think that works um, but we were looking for like-hearted souls to engage with and and since I've been coming here um, I, I believe that uh, um, we I've found such a community it's been wonderful and so this presentation today is to introduce you to um, a wonderful um, individual a peace activist from a century ago um, his name was Abdul Baha and some of you I'm sure have run into Baha'is in your travels and you probably know of and you may have heard the name Abdul Baha and he was the son of the prophet founder of the Baha'i faith whose name was Baha'u'llah which means the glory of God so about a month ago um, I uh, in, enjoyed a wonderful online Zoom with several others, maybe some are in this room, uh, newbies, I call them, and um, I think Mark was on and Alan was on and Anne, and uh, it was really interesting to be introduced to the uh, sort of the doctrines and the creed of the uh, Unitarian Church, and I've like, put them up here, they're all familiar to you, you've seen them and probably have seen them for many years, um, but I wanted to show this, and I'll just highlight a few of them, you know, about, uh, you know, seeking wisdom from prophets and sages. That was the inspiration from this talk, or for this talk. Uh, appreciating the inherent worth and dignity of all people, acceptance of each other, spiritual growth as part of our journey, uh, being free and responsible in our search for truth, um, abolition of racism, seeking a world community of peace, liberty, and justice for all, like Cat Stevens was just singing about, um, and, and the others you can see there. The reason why I wanted to put these up here is because when you look at the Baha'i, um, what I call the foundation principles for world unity, um, you can see that there's a lot of commonality. And I think this is what has attracted me to the Unitarian community for many years. I've, I've engaged with Unitarian uh, congregations over many years and, and they're just wonderful. You're wonderful souls. And so you can see the common uh, foundational principles of the Baha'i uh, faith, the oneness of the creator or God, whatever you prefer to call that creative force in the universe, the oneness of religion and humanity, that we're all members of one family, that all the great messengers and prophets like the creed for Unitarianism about you know, looking to the teachings of Jesus and Moses and others, right? Um, that they're all representing one divine um, messenger from the creator to humanity for, for the purpose of renewing spiritual teachings over the ages and throughout the ages. And so different names, different lampshades, but the light coming from them is all the same. Love your neighbor, do well to other people, be kind, sacrifice, serve humanity. These principles seem to be the spiritual foundation of all the great religions of the world. And you can see the other teachings, they're very similar to the Unitarian teachings. And, and you can see a couple of examples about the elimination of all forms of prejudice, um, the harmony of science and religion in independent investigation of truth, right? And uh, so anyway, the principles you see here are very similar to the principles you see there. And so this is um, part of the reason why it's such a comfort for me to come here and be with all the friends here. Um, so I want to introduce you today to Abdul Baha. His name means servant of glory. And I just mentioned that Baha'u'llah means the glory of God. Abdul Baha was Baha'u'llah's eldest son. And his whole life was devoted to his father and sharing his teachings of peace and harmony and unity and oneness. He was born in Persia in 1844, a prisoner of conscience for close to 60 years. And he was finally released uh, by the Young Turk Revolution in 1908. And he was then free to, um, to uh, listen to the call of his, the believers in America and Europe 
and others who are interested in hearing him and having him come. And he came to Europe and America um, over the course of a couple of years. He spent uh, 239 days traveling through the United States and Canada. Uh, but this is my favorite picture of Abdu'l-Baha. This was taken in Dublin, New Hampshire, and um, when he was here in 1912. So um, we, this is a little, little connection to the Titanic story from a couple of weeks ago. Abdu'l-Baha, the, the believers in England, in the UK, wanted him to travel on the Titanic and brought him a ticket to go on the Titanic. And Abdu'l-Baha said, I was asked to sail upon the Titanic, but my heart did not prompt me to do so. You know, he just felt that, that there were other, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't right for him to go, and so he didn't. He traveled on the SS Cedric, and he arrived in New York City uh, in April of 1912. Um, he came to speak in North America to the peace societies, and, um, and he brought his father's uh, message of peace and the oneness of humanity. And he also was asked to uh, um, speak to the uh, Central Organization for a Durable Peace at The Hague. They contacted him in 1915, and that, of course, was the organization trying to develop a peace plan after and in the midst of World War I, what, what would come of it afterwards. And so Abdu'l-Bahá was highly sought after to participate in those discussions, and he wrote letters to them that unfortunately did not get to the organization until 1920 because of the war. Um, and so anyway, so Abdu'l-Bahá was, was an advocate for peace, an activist for peace. Uh, during his sojourn in the U.S. and Canada, um, he gave hundreds of talks to a combined audience of almost 93, 94,000 people uh, in that 239 days. And at least seven of these uh, talks were to uh, Unitarian Universalist congregations, and all of those were in the United States. He spoke on many of the issues of the day, race unity, gender equality, peace, oneness of humanity, women's rights, harmony of science and religion, social reform, moral development, and many other, many other topics. And uh, here's a sample of some of the uh, um, advertisement. You know, Abdu'l-Bahá would be the first to tell you that he wasn't a prophet. You know, Baha'u'llah was, who Baha'is acknowledge as the prophet, you know, for this faith and for this day. And uh, Abdu'l-Bahá said, I'm not a prophet, you know, but he was certainly a sage, you know, and highly respected and um, a brilliant, uh, brilliant mind. And of interest here, up in the upper right corner, you can see the Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario newspaper carried an article. Uh, you know, and I was wondering if maybe the Sarnia paper might have had something. I, I don't know. But the other one of interest to me was the Palo Alton um, uh, on the lower left. And you can see Abdu'l-Bahá walking uh, on the campus of Stanford University. Uh, David Starr Jordan, who was the president, um, was um, very in interested in having Abdu'l-Bahá come and speak, as I'll show you in just a minute. And uh, so America of 1912, um, you know, many social issues, as you all know, were front and center, racial segregation, uh, was prominent. Women did not have the right to vote at the time. Um, there was hunger and poverty, child labor it was, a, was a concern, and also the widening gap between rich and poor. So, um, you know, there were a lot of issues. It was a, a great time for Abdu'l-Bahá, this peace activist, to come to America. Um, there was also, in 1893, you probably, many of you historians will remember that there was the World Parliament of Religions held in Chicago at the, uh, at the uh, World's Fair. And um, it invited uh, uh, such the, the likes of Vivekananda, the great Hindu sage, and um, also uh, Anagarika Dharmapala came to America and shared Hinduism and Buddhism with Americans and Canadians for the first time. This is the first time they'd ever had this exposure. And then from there, um, Sarah Farmer, I put her name up there, you may not be familiar with her, but she purchased a hotel on the banks of the Piscataqua River and, had a, and decided for, after the World Parliament of Religions, she wanted peace conferences, bringing people together. And so there's a picture of Abdu'l-Bahá at Greenacre um, in 1912. And then below is uh, Swami Vivekananda, um, probably in the mid-1890s after the World Parliament of Religions on the shores of, uh, of the Piscataqua in Greenacre. Um, in the 1890s, the Smiley Brothers, two Quakers, uh, started these uh, um, Lake Mohonk conferences for international arbitration, and they had invited Abdu'l-Bahá to come to America and speak at that conference, which he did in 1912. Um, he spoke to Unitarian Universalists, Theosophists, 
He spoke to the Unity Church. You know, there are a number of talks uh, with the Unity Church, um, which of course is across the river too in, in uh, Port Huron. And I think Deb's gonna be speaking there in a few weeks. Um, but anyway, it was a great time for Abdu'l Baha to be here. Lots of issues of interest that were really relevant to what he could share about. Um, so 239 days, he spoke to churches, including President Taft's All Saints uh, Uni uh, Uni Unitarian Universalist Church in Washington. He spoke at synagogues, universities, including Stanford and Howard, um, which is a pro predominantly black uh, um, university. Um, he spoke at, uni at a Unitarian conference in Boston. They had uh, 800 Unitarian pastors or ministers and uh, about 2,000 attendees. And uh, this is a man that had been imprisoned most of his life, now speaking in front of small audiences, large audiences, uh, in the thousands sometimes. Um, he spoke at the Lake Mohawk Conference, the Bowery to the Poor in New York. You know, he spoke to uh, peace societies, theosophical societies. And uh, so he was speaking in front of a few like us, maybe 20 people, and he spoke in front of thousands. And men, women, black, white, rich, poor, um, he spoke with David Starr Jordan, as I mentioned. He spoke to Theodore Roosevelt. He spoke to uh, Alexander Graham Bell. The point I'm mentioning here is this. Everybody, whether high or low in society, wanted to have some contact with this individual because of his, uh, he had a, just a loving heart and this message of peace. That's what they wanted to hear about. So um, an interesting um, point there was a man named Howard Colby Ives, who was the author of this book, Portals to Freedom. And Howard Colby Ives was a Unitarian, is, or was at the time a Unitarian minister, and who came to New York because he wanted to hear Abdu'l Baha speak. And he became devoted to Abdu'l Baha and, and toured with him throughout his tours in America. And um, this is what he said. He said, to those who met Abdu'l Baha, to many that meeting did not convey more than a contact with personified dignity, beauty, wisdom, and selflessness. And so led them at, at least to higher altitudes of thought and life. To hundreds of others, that meeting was the door to undreamed of worlds, to a new and boundless and eternal life. The interesting point here is, you know, this, this individual, Abdul Baha, you know, he was, he was truly a sage. He was a peace, a, a sage of peace, an activist for peace. Yeah, you know, and he really attracted the hearts of people and touched the hearts of people uh, very deeply. And so Howard Colby Ives, the author of this book, uh, Unitarian Minister, was one of those that was deeply touched by Abdu'l Baha's um, uh, visit. And what did he say to Howard Colby Ives? What did Abdu'l Baha say and to the Unitarian congregations? So here's uh, what Abdu'l Baha said about the Unitarian Universalist doctrines and creeds. He said, the doctrines and creed of this church so capably expressed by its revered minister, are truly commendable, sanctified, and worthy of praise and glorification. For these precepts are opposed to the deep-rooted religious prejudices of the day. It is evident that prejudices arising from adherence to religious forms and imitation of ancestral beliefs have hindered the progress of humanity thousands of years. How many wars and battles have been fought? How much division, discord, and hatred have been caused by this form of prejudice? But inasmuch as this century is a century of the revelation of reality, praise be to God the thoughts of men are being directed toward the welfare and unity of humanity. My feeling is Abdu'l Baha was invited by UU churches to come, but he saw within them this spirit. You know, and I'm sure that's why he would go and have these these gatherings, because he saw that within that that community, which I see within this community, which is nice. Um, in Chicago at the All Souls uh, UU Church, Abdul Baha talked about another important principle, um, important to this congregation, and that uh, was about seeking wisdom from prophets and sages. He reiterated the divine purpose of religion. He said the divine religions were founded for the purpose of unifying humanity and establishing universal peace. Any movement which brings about peace and agreement in human society is truly a divine movement. Any reform which causes people to come together under the shelter of the same tabernacle is surely animated by heavenly motives. 
At all times and in all ages of the world, religion has been a factor in cementing together the hearts of men and in uniting various and divergent creeds. It is the peace element in religion that blends mankind and makes for unity. Warfare has ever been the cause of separation, disunion and discord. What I love about this community is that peace is front and center, acceptance, unity, love of all, right? And so Abdu'l Baha fed on these principles and, and shared them back with the community that he was talking to. He did that throughout all of his talks in America, which are recorded in this book. It's called The Promulgation of Universal Peace. And you read his, his, book, his messages, his, his talks to the people. And you know, if he's talking to Christians, he's telling them about loving Moses and Muhammad. If he's talking to Jews, he's telling them about Jesus and Muhammad. If he's talking to different groups, he's always trying to encourage them to love others, you know, which is wonderful. So, um, at the UU conference in Boston, I said he talked to 800 uh, ministers and, and, um, and uh, 2,000 uh, also attendees. He said that religion must be living, vitalized, moving, and progressive. If it be without motion and non-progressive, it is without the divine life. It is dead. The divine institutes are continuously active and evolutionary. Therefore, the revelation of them must be progressive and continuous. I won't read all of these. You can read them on your, yourself, but I'm putting forth some of the main principles. That, yeah, so Abdu'l Baha, again, was sort of focusing on unity. You know, that, and at that time in 1912, just like here, you know, many of you in this audience have maybe different beliefs within a common congregation, you know, different ways of seeing things. And so Abdu'l Baha was trying to, in all of his talks, to promote unity, no matter what the underlying theme of his discussion was. Unity was always prevalent. Um, he talked about the divine prophets having revealed and founded religion. They have laid down certain laws and heavenly principles for the guidance of mankind. They have taught and promulgated the knowledge of God or the creator, established praiseworthy ethical ideals and inculcated the highest standards of virtues in the human world. And what I love about this congregation is that you have collected those from the wisdom of many prophets and sages and sort of hold on to you know, many of these in your, uh, in your own hearts. And that's wonderful. Um, in Brooklyn, he spoke to a Unitarian church. He said, this is a Unitarian church. And then the Arabic tongue this day may well be called Yom al Idahad, the Unitarian day. Therefore, I consider it appropriate to speak to you upon the subject of unity. In this great century, the most important accomplishment is the unity of mankind. In this century of illumination, hearts are inclined toward agreement and fellowship and minds are thoughtful upon the question of the unification of mankind. There is an emanation of the universal consciousness today, which clearly indicates the dawn of a great unity. And again, I love what the, the, the theme of this congregation is service to the community. You're always serving, bringing people in to learn about the environment, about all these different facets that you can then engage in. It's wonderful. Abdu'l Baha said, you're all the leaves of one tree, are all are sheltered beneath the protecting mercy and providence of God, all are the children of God, fruit upon the one tree of his love. Commitment to reason and science is a, another vital principle to the uh, part of the Unitarian doctrine and creed. Abdu'l Baha said, among other principles of Baha'u'llah, teachings was the harmony of science and religion. Religion must stand the analysis of reason. It must agree with scientific fact and proof so that science will sanction religion and religion fortify science. Both are indissolubly welded and joined in reality. You know, so, so the reason is very important in, in the religious side, too. We have to have reason. And in, on, the, on the science side, there needs to be the moral or ethical code of, of a spiritual code of some type, right? To, to keep it in service to humanity. So that's what uh, he was teaching here. Um, he also talked about independent investigation of truth, another UU principle. He said, uh, in one talk, he said, Know ye that God has created in man the power of reason, whereby man is enabled to investigate reality. God has not intended man to imitate blindly his fathers and ancestors. He has endowed him with mind or the faculty of reasoning by the exercise of which he is to investigate and discover the truth. So, again, I, I won't read all these. You can read them yourself, because uh, I know it's being recorded. 
But again, the, the, another key point of the Baha'i teachings that really correlates well with you, the Unitarian teachings is the, the need for the independent investigation of truth and, to, and the search for truth in all things. Um, world peace, world community. Um, Baha'u'llah says the earth is but one country and mankind its citizens. Abdu'l Baha said, O ye beloved of the Lord, bestir yourselves, do all in your power to be as one and to live in peace, each with the others. For ye are all the drops from one ocean, the foliage of one tree, the pearls from a single shell, the flowers and sweet herbs from the same one garden. And achieving that, strive ye to unite the hearts of those who follow other faiths. You guys do that, you know, which is really wonderful. You encourage, you welcome your, your statement at the beginning that you welcome all to this community at this day. So it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful spirit of this group. Um, but just a, a word about uh, the ab ab abolishment of all prejudices. Abdul Baha came to America to speak about racism and about race unity. And he said that um, he, he, uh, there was a couple, uh, this gentleman here that you see, Louis Gregory was an, a lawyer trained at uh, Howard University. And he met this young woman, uh, Louisa Matthew, from uh, the UK, who was a Baha'i that had come to America. And they spent time together, and Abdu'l Baha recognized the love they had for each other and encouraged them to marry. And they did. So, this is an example of an early um, marriage uh, between an uh, African descent male in America and a, and a white woman. And um, they had a wonderful life together. But um, during Abdu'l Baha's stay in Washington, there was a wonderful dinner um, offered for him, and um, Louis Gregory was not included because he was black. And so Abdu'l Baha asked the, the organizers of this big luncheon to please get Mr. Gregory and to prepare a seat for him next to him at the head of the table in the seat of honor. And Abdu'l Baha told the congregation of people, he said, the black, the African American, the black man, is like the pupil of the eye through which the light of reality enters the, the body. He said, they, that's how special they are. He said, and so he, he talked about the, the, uh, the African-American community here and encouraged integration. And um, the Baha'i community began immediately to take this to heart and began to uh, hold am race amity conferences in New York and Boston and, and uh, Washington bringing people together. Um, so the wisdom, I'm just a couple more slides, I'll wrap up. Um, you know, the, one of the things that uh, this congregation is uh, supportive of is seeking wisdom from uh, sages and prophets. And um, to me, if there's one spiritual truth that brings us all together, it's love. And this is one of Abdu'l Baha's most amazing quotes I mean, they're all amazing, I guess, but and he says, know thou of a certainty that love is the secret of God's holy dispensation, the manifestation of the all merciful, the fountain of spiritual outpourings. Love is heaven's kindly light, the Holy Spirit's eternal breath that vivifieth the human soul. Love is the cause of God's revelation unto man, the vital bond inherent in accordance with the divine creation and the realities of things. Love is the one means that ensureth true felicity, both in this world and the next. Love is the light that guideth in darkness, the living link that uniteth God with man, that assureth the progress of every illumined soul. Love is the most great law that ruleth this mighty and heavenly cycle, the unique power that bindeth together the diverse elements of this material world, the supreme magnetic force that directeth the movements of the spheres in the celestial realms. Love revealeth with unfailing and limitless power the mysteries latent in the universe. Love is the spirit of life unto the adorned body of mankind, the establisher of true civilization in this mortal world, and the shedder of imperishable glory upon every high-aiming race and nation. I mean, of all the spiritual principles and truths, justice, love, you know, all of Abdu'l Baha, I mean, this to me is such a profound statement about the power of love. And uh, it's wonderful in this group, right? So um, in closing, we share common beliefs and universal principles. 
You know, Abdu'l Baha was the vehicle by which Baha'u'llah's teachings came to America a century ago, over a century ago. Um, our shared beliefs in, in the oneness of the creator, of that creative spirit of humanity, of religion, inspires us to be proactive with like-hearted souls. You know, you guys engage with everybody. I love it. It's, it's what it's about. So, um, you know, think globally, act locally, that old saying. I think Baha'is and Unitarians are, are pros at this uh, because we serve in communities. You know, we love people and serve. Um, Abdu'l Baha revealed hundreds of prayers, and I've included one here. I won't close because I know I've run out of time, um, but I'll leave it here for you to look at. And I've printed out a few copies here that if anybody would like to read it. Um, if some people don't pray, you can think of this like a poem. You read it and it's very poetic. You know, so a, a poem, a prayer, whatever you'd like to call it, um, it's there and you can, uh, I'll, uh, won't take up any more time because I know we're probably, I'm out of time, I think. Am I? Well, let me, I'll say this prayer then and to close. Abdu'l Baha says, oh thou kind, this is what he revealed to, the, to a conference of Unitarians in Chicago. He said, oh thou kind Lord, thou hast created all humanity from the same stock. Thou hast decreed that all shall belong to the same household. In thy holy presence, they are all thy servants, and all mankind are sheltered beneath thy tabernacle. All have gathered together at thy table of bounty. All are illumined through the light of thy providence. O God, thou art kind to all. Thou hast provided for all. Dost shelter all, confers life upon all. Thou hast endowed each and all with talents and faculties, and all are submerged in the ocean of thy mercy. O thou kind Lord, Unite all, let the religions agree and make the nations one, so that they may see each other as one family and the whole earth as one home. May they all live together in perfect harmony. O oh God, raise aloft the banner of the oneness of mankind. O oh God, establish the most great peace. Cement thou, O oh God, the hearts together. O oh thou kind Father, God, gladden our hearts through the fragrance of thy love. Brighten our eyes through the light of thy guidance. Delight our ears with the melody of thy word and shelter us all in the stronghold of thy providence. Thou art the mighty and powerful. Thou art the forgiving and thou art the one who overlooketh the shortcomings of all mankind. So that's an introduction to Abdu'l-Baha and uh, his teachings that are it's really the a look at the teachings of, of that Abdu'l-Baha brought his father's teachings that really jive well with the, uh, with the uh, Unitarian Universalist uh, creed and doctrines. There we go, thank you. Oh, and I have left, uh, there are some copies of that uh, poem prayer up at the front, and Deb and I are doing some things on the Port Huron side if you're interested in, in sort of collaborating with us, uh, with the, our tiny Baha'i community. We're a massive group of two, yeah, 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 just Deb and I, yeah, and so I'm, uh, I elected her chairman and secretary of the group, so anyway, but there's a list up there of things that we're doing, and if you're interested, you're always welcome to join us. We, our motto is, conversions are not acceptable, but transformations are welcome. Yeah, that's what we do, we don't push anything. <laughs>